Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to another episode of Sri's daily global COVID-19 show. My name is Sri Srinivasan, and it's my privilege to convene this daily conversation around all things COVID-19. Thank you so much for being here with us. We've been on the air for 183 episodes in a row, 183 days of COVID in New York, 183 days of lockdown in New York. Today, we are bringing you a very special episode about Los Angeles under COVID. And we have three very special guests to talk to you today. Fernando Zeladon is with us. He's a former elementary teacher. He's a community organizer and international startup consultant. Catherine Garces is with us. She is a small business owner who reinvented herself after a recent fire. And Greg Monterosa is with us. He's an expert on entrepreneurship and the Latinx community. You'll meet all of them in just a moment. Hi, everybody. I'm Sri. Thank you so much for being here. I'm the Marshall Loeb Visiting Professor of Digital Innovation at Stony Brook School of Journalism and the co-founder of DigiMentors, a social, digital, and virtual events consulting company. Our motto, don't cancel your event without talking to us. Don't even plan your virtual event without talking to us. We've done events for 50 people and 100,000 people. We bet your events are somewhere in that range. My email address is right here. Call me, write to me. We love geeking out on all things social. We're live on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, and on LinkedIn. Please hit share right now so your family and friends around the world can watch and participate. They can watch now or later. We'll be live on all these events as soon as our show is over. So if you've not seen this before, this is our 183rd episode. In the first 175, we had more than a million viewers, 129 million social impressions, 316 guests, 185 of them women, from 63 cities, 17 countries, and including the chief scientist of the World Health Organization. We're able to do this because of our partnership with Scroll Global and Scroll.in. We're archived on youtube.com slash Srinet. You can find all our episodes there. But I'm really able to do this because of our producers, Rose Horowitz, at Rose Horowitz 31, and Vandana Menon, Vandana underscore Menon. They've worked with me for 183 days without taking a single day off. They're amazing. Thank you so much to them. Also, big thank yous to our sponsors, who you will meet in about 10, 15 minutes. But before that, I think you're ready to talk all about LA and life under COVID in Los Angeles. Our guests are Fernando, Catherine, and Greg. Two of them are here already, and Greg will be joining us in just a few minutes. So let me bring on stage Catherine and Fernando. Please say hello. Hi, folks. Hello. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Fernando has been watching uh, at least a hundred of these episodes and I've been asking him from June to be a guest here and we finally made it happen. Thank you, Fernando. And you brought us Catherine. We're so grateful to both of you for being here. I know you have shared this with your family and friends and everybody watching. We're gonna learn a lot about what's happening in Los Angeles. We're gonna talk about COVID health, COVID finance, COVID racial inequality, and we are going to be uh, learning so much together. So first question always is, how are you? Where are you in Los Angeles? And how's your family doing through the pandemic? Let me start with Catherine. Uh, I am currently, I live in Granada Hills. Uh, the business is uh, in El Monte. Family's great. COVID has been, you know, um, changing experience, not to me, but just to everybody in the world, you know? So all of us trying to reinvent ourselves, but we're very careful here. People wear masks when they go to restaurants. Everything is outside seating. Um, it, you're not allowed to go into an establishment without wearing a mask. Uh, a lot of people try to be as careful as they can. You know, some people don't like to follow directions, but what can we do, right? Um, trying to stay healthy, eating healthy, um, eating what we need, vitamins and, and fruits and doing the right diet so that it is, strength is our immune system more importantly that our immune system is strong for you know especially the winter coming so that's part of what we do in the business we advise our clients to always take care of their health 
uh, and um, basically we're doing what we can in the business. Andrea Celti Kitchen uh, went through some rough patches, but I guess we'll talk about it in a minute. Thank you, and we will. I just want to find out the sign behind you, uh, which says, trust me, you can dance. That's a beautiful sign and beautiful flowers. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's go to Fernando. Uh, Fernando, where are you? How are you? And how's your family coping with COVID? I'm here in Los Angeles, California, actually right next to the airport, if you know the area. It's in between El Segundo and Hawthorne. It's an area called Del Air. Um, I'm doing good. My family's doing well. Uh, we had a little bit of uh, COVID within the family. Uh, my uh, One of my family members is a uh, frontline worker and, and got exposed to the, the virus. Lived through it. We didn't know until weeks later, so there was no uh, uh, shelter sheltering in place, but we, we didn't catch it. So we we're very blessed in that regard. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're okay. We're looking at a map of Los Angeles uh, because we have an international audience, people watching from around the world. So Los Angeles, people think of as a city, but it's actually spread out and spread out and spread out. And uh, yeah. so, uh, so it's important for people to understand that Los Angeles, what we think of Los Angeles is actually a series of towns, right? There is downtown LA, but there's also uh, lots of different types of neighborhoods, Same. communities, and all of that. And it's important for people to know when they're thinking about California and about Los Angeles. So uh, let's, let's uh, first uh, talk to Catherine about her business and it went through some changes, although there was a fire. So just set up the story a little bit and tell me where to go on this map so that uh, people can uh, know the, uh, you know, the region that you're talking about. So we're in the city of El Monte. Um, if you want to look at it, it's keep going down from Pasadena, West Covina, you passed it. You have to go in a little more in the, in the map so we can open it more. It's a small city. Okay. If you can open it a little more, it's right. I don't know if I, you could follow. It's right next to Rosemead, Alhambra, El Monte is right there. I see it right here. Okay. okay. So you're, yes. you're there. Uh, the, our, Chinese our, theater, the Chinese our theater. Business, right yeah, yeah, you can see that. Our business, our business was there. That's where our business uh, was located. Uh, back in May, um, after going through the COVID, you know, we were trying to stay open and things were a blessing. We were able to work with the community. We were able to provide for the community as well and do donations. You know, um, I was talking about that with someone today that we didn't want to share what we were doing for our community. But sharing, we realized that it inspires other businesses to do the same and be involved in their community and see how they can reach out and help others. You know, through COVID, we realized that it's about coming together. It's not about my business but it's our business so we had when our business burned down in may we had a lot of support from other businesses including another another um, juice business provided materials that we needed because we couldn't find anything at that moment everything was impossible to have a reach out to so um it was very hard uh, my business partners are tatiana and andres uh, andrew uh, pacheco they're a uh, uh, husband and wife. They've been in the business for a while. Uh, they decided to open the store. And within about before the year, I decided to join in the event the venture. I see the potential in the business. I think it's a great, a great uh, product and a great model. It's about focusing on healthy living, changing lives. Uh, Tatiana herself, it's her baby. She's the one that created the company um, because she wanted to change her health and she wanted to be, you know, in, in a better health. Uh, what I would say, she started creating the juices and it's um, it's a detox program that we have for five days, three days. And our clients didn't want to give up on us. You know, as when the store burned down, we still got people, you know, ordering juices from us and business kept going. So we had to uh, get uh, a kitchen where we can work from in Pasadena and be able to provide for our clients and have them pick up at a certain location. It's been an experience. It's very um rewarding to see that people believe in you and people believe in Andrea Selfie Kitchen. You know, they want us to stay and they want to shop and they want to, they, 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 they want to do their detox also for their health, but also helping us. Um, one of the big things that we also are very big on is teaching our clients on the importance of 
change in your lifestyle. You know, it's a change of lifestyle when you start eating healthy and, and doing, you know, a, a different type of eating. Um, we encourage, you know, a lot of different methods that you can have a healthy life, exercising, eating better, uh, the juicing, talk, the detox juicing. It's one of the best things that we provide for. We've had clients that have been able to lose a lot of weight. For some reason, men lose weight faster than women. You know, it's always the husband and the wife doing it together. And they always say, yeah, my husband lost weight faster than I did. But, you know, I mean, here is, you know, working as a team. Uh, we also, we also encourage the ginger, you know, our ginger is famous. It, we sell out all the time. Ginger shots we encourage for boosting the immune system. We heard that a, a doctor, I believe, was it in Haiti or in Jamaica? He actually went through COVID and he went through a treatment of himself doing turmeric and ginger shots. And he got better through that. So we decided to also provide that for our community and let them know how important it is, you know, to boost your immune system. You know, COVID doesn't doesn't live on a healthy body. You know, and and being with a strong immune system, you know, a lot of vitamin C, uh, a lot of vitamin D3. So we are constantly teaching our clients the importance. It's not only about it's about giving back. Andrea Healthy Kitchen on 2020. Crazy to say our theme was giving back. So what happened with COVID and what happened with uh, the fire, we were able to live up to that motto that we decided in 2020 to be giving back to our community. So Tatiana, Andrew, and I decided that was going to be our focus. Um, we decided to roll up our sleeves and not give up. Our clients still following us where we go. We had the help of the city officials. I know City del Monte have been incredible. They've been amazing to us. Uh, the city manager, um, the mayor, uh, the city attorney, uh, they've been really, really supportive of us. You know, we feel like we're like, you know, a spoiled child with them. Uh, they saw the value of the city of El Monte and the, and, and the people wanting us to stay. And I cannot tell you how blessed we feel of having the city support us so much, so much. We just, we were like, my gosh, where's this coming from? You know, media supported us. It was all over the media. Uh, you know, we, we couldn't give up. We couldn't let our clients down. So we decided that this is it. This is the moment to come back and, and rise from the ashes. And now we're looking for a new location. I mean, we have our new location and hopefully it opens mid-October. Mid we were hoping the end of September, but more likely it might be mid-October. So we're really excited for our new location. Thank you. And we'll show everybody Andrea's uh, Healthy Kitchen in a few minutes. Uh, I know that uh, Fernando has been listening to this, but I do wanna ask Catherine, to have in the middle of the pandemic, to have a fire must have been so heartbreaking and your employees, I'm glad everybody was safe, but uh, did they, what, what is the next steps for, the, uh, for, for what happened there? So it was crazy because we were closing earlier, um, you know, our closing times with eight o'clock and we're closing at five. So when the fire happened, we would have been open. So that was another shock to us, you know, and when we got there, everything just burned down, down completely. There was no way that we can save anything. And at that moment, we just stand there and looking at each other, you know, and all I can do is just be a support to my business partner. You know, she, it's her baby. She created this, you know, I came in as a new investor and for her to see her and her husband, you know, see their baby kind of go down to ashes. All I could say was, let me, we got, we can do this. We got this. We're going to come back and we're going to be support. We're going to be supported. Our, our friends, our families and our clients, literally our clients were incredible to us. They're just, they just keep asking. If you see our stuff right there, they keep asking for all those products, our smoothies, our acai bowls, our, our, that's, those are the detox that we have, our juices. They are a hundred percent natural there is no additives no water um we work with 100 percent natural juices so let's we want to sure let's, let's tell everybody where they can find this uh in, if you're in the la area how do you get there what town is it in and where can they so find we're it? we're in uh right now we are working from a kitchen in pasadena uh but we have a pickup location so if you go to andreaseltykitchen.com you can place your orders there. We deliver 30 mile radius. Uh, people come from uh, San Diego. People come from 
different places to to come and, and, and try our juices. They take the drive because it's a five day detox. So they buy the full detox and they take the drive with the family and they pick up their juices. Sometimes husband, wife and sister and brother are doing it. And we have all these orders coming in. Uh, it's five juices a day. So it's it's a program that you do. You know, you you do your, your bottles every three hours, five juices a day, making sure you drink a gallon of water. And we give you instructions if you're hungry and you feel like you need to eat something. You know, it depends how much you want to lose, you know, and how focused you are on doing your detox. Thank you. Let's talk to Fernando about his work. And uh, well, Fernando, you're a former elementary school teacher and you are also a startup advisor. So talk about your work, please. Lord, uh, where do I start? So I first started off as a teacher. I've been in the classroom for over 22 years. I've taught everything from TK all the way up to 12th grade now that I've been subbing. And uh, in the past year, um, I would just let go from my subbing position uh, because of COVID. Uh, the 30th of March was my last uh, uh, assignment. But since then, it, it just seemed like it was an opportunity. And so what I've been going is completely all in in the uh, startup ecosystem. I'm helping out uh, startups from all over the world, really. But I'm, my focus is in Latin America and Africa and in the secondary markets. So most of my attention is uh, toward places like El Salvador, Nicaragua, uh, Guatemala, uh in Africa, it's Ghana, Nigeria, Egypt, uh, Cameroon, just recently Cameroon. So what I do is I, I give them assistance wherever I can, make introductions to the right people. They, um, it could be collaborators. It could be uh, 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 customers, the whole gamut. So... What I do is I, I give them that assistance that they wouldn't receive in their home countries. Because quite frankly, the ecosystem that we have here in Los Angeles or in the state of California, and even in New York, New York is a wonderful place. I do a lot of collaboration with uh, the New York uh, startup ecosystem. It is incredible. If you go to a place like Cameroon, for instance, it's, va it's vacant and uh, they, they need the help. And so, uh, that's what I, I do. That's the bulk of my, my uh, interest and attention goes there. And I do other uh, assisting projects. For instance, I've connected uh, women's groups in Mexico and in Peru with women's groups in uh, San Francisco Bay Area. I, I've worked with Lean In Latinas. I've worked with uh, Hidden Genius Project and uh, Black Girls Code and Girls Code. One of my favorite things to do is constantly connecting. I love that. You're a great connector. And we met through this show because you were constantly posting and commenting. And certainly, uh, we certainly appreciate that. So thank you. Uh, let's do a tour, folks. People are commenting from around the world. Let's uh, get some comments and uh, have you respond. Jonathan's watching from the East Village. And Jonathan has watched 183 episodes in a row. So let me ask both of you your favorite memory of New York City. I'm originally from New York. Oh, great. <laughs> and I was born and raised in the East Village. <laughs> oh, wow. That is awesome. Uh, yeah. So, Lisa, how to Jonathan. And uh, uh, what was it like to, uh, to leave New York? Do you come back? Have you been back in recent years? Yes, I do. I visit my family. My uh, family's still there. So I go back. I visit my friends, high school reunions college friends the thing about i love about new york is that when you come back and you reunite with your friends it's like you left yesterday i love that about them you know and when i go there it's like it's like they saw me yesterday you know so we reconnect it's it's a beautiful feeling to see your friends that you left behind i've been in la for over 20 years but i do go back as much as i try and i can you know business or family or whatever excuse the pizza the italian food you know everything that i can possibly have <laughs> Los Angeles or New Yorker? What are you now? I'm both. Uh, uh, I have my heart in New York and, you know, my kids, uh, they, they were raised here. So, but my heart is still in New York. I still, you know, enjoy, when I go to New York, all I do is eat. That's all I do. 
Eat and visit museums. <laughs> Love that. And the LA museums are getting better and better all the time too before COVID. Yes, Let's yes, yes. Your, Fernando, your favorite memories of New York? Um, I haven't been to yet, but uh, I- Wait, wait, on. time out. You've not been to New York? Haven't oh yet. My God. Okay, we got to get you here. We got to yeah, get you. You're missing out. <laughs> the food. No, I, I've been told sitting never sleeps. Yeah. In Vegas. <laughs> So we got to get you to New York, a big party when, when you can fly in 2021, when we yes. all have vaccinated, you're going to come out, right? Okay. Yeah. Be awesome. yeah. Okay. Uh, Rajan is watching from Long Island. Dear friend has been watching the show and, uh, and has been a guest on the show, just like Jonathan. Aparna is watching from LA. She used to work at City Hall. She says, love, perhaps unsur unsurprisingly LA, uh, representing specifically here at the literal crossroads of Los Feliz and and Thai town. So thank you, Aparna, for being here. And uh, Aparna says you were giving good data points before Catherine. And um, Charles Cunnan Carroll, Charles and Mary are watching from New Jersey. They are dear friends. And Charles is a sponsor of this show. You'll see my thank you to him in a few minutes. And Aparna says, I'm still getting to know all 99 neighborhoods that make up unincorporated LA. I didn't know it was 99, but it's good to know. Uh, that 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 it is. How do you, uh, Fernando, think of LA as a as one city when it's 99 cities? I didn't know that. Number. Yeah, it, it just it just all blends into one. I, you really don't know when you're going from one city to another. Rarely is there a sign that tells you you're actually crossed the barrier, or or, or you've noticed that the numbers on the uh, the houses go up or down. So you don't really know until you know. Until you get lost. <laughs> Until you get lost. I think I think there have been more than one movie about people lost in LA. So uh, that's yeah. that's part of it. Vasanta is coming in with breaking important news. Wash your hands. So everybody, please do that. Very very important. Vandana has put in a link to Andrea's Healthy Kitchen. And Chris Gorman's watching from New York City. Chris works at the Great American Folk Art Museum, another great museum here in New York. They've started opening up all these museums in New York. I know in LA also they've started doing that. Big news this week is they are now going to allow indoor dining up to 25% in New York. So we're very excited about that as well. I'm only going to sit outside as long as the weather permits. And the East Village includes Losaida is a rest, uh, I guess is, uh, is what Jonathan is saying. So um, let me ask you, uh, 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 Catherine, about life as a, a small business owner, uh, what are the uh, tools, resources that you had before COVID and after COVID, during COVID, what help did you get from the Los Angeles government, the California government and federal government? Provide us with a grant. They helped us with a grant. They helped us to get a location. Um, they were very supportive on things that we needed, like the permits and all that. They try to move as fast as they can. Uh, the city, um, the city attorney, he owns a building and he uh, provided us with a location. He was kind enough to allow us to start. And, you know, we, we, he, um, he did a rental agreement with us that it's uh, affordable and that way he's so happy to have us. He's really excited. He's such a wonderful human being, and and he keeps just telling me and telling Tatiana and Andrew, I just want you, I just want you guys here. I just want to be able to support you. The city of Monte wants to see you guys back. They want to see Andrea's Healthy Kitchen. You know the school system that we we provide for uh, lunches for a lot of offices. You know, so we're excited. You know that this city was so amazing to us. Uh, the city manager, she was amazing. Anything we needed, she was there to provide help. Uh, media. And everybody just would come and call us. People would buy juices just to come and say hello and just say, listen, I'm buying this because I want to support you and I want you guys back. And we're, we, this is so rewarding as a business owner to know that you are impacting lives, that you are doing something good for your clients and for your community. So for us, it was just a matter of reinventing ourselves. You know, what do we do? How do we how do we how do we become different and, and how do we help our community? And at times through COVID, um, there was hard moments and, and it was it was very tough to see, you know, everyday life. And we were struggling with with, you know, the, the uh, our, our 
our products, you know, our bottles, our, our, uh, our vegetables, our fruits, we were, it was a stressful moment for us. But at the same time, we were able to give back just a little bit, you know, sometimes we give them, our clients would give them as a thank you, a, ba a bag of a small bag of rice, a small bag of, of beans, uh, we give them toilet paper, you know, we found something to put in their bag as a thank you. And And as, a, and, a, and as a gratitude for what they did for us and for being there for us and supporting us. It's been an emotional roller coaster. I cannot tell you how hard it's been on our children, on our friends, but most importantly on our children too. We have, Tatiana has two amazing, beautiful kids. Today is her daughter's birthday. Uh, and I have three kids. And when they saw this happen, it's just, for them was also a shock. So how do we make sure we tell our children it's going to be okay? So as parents, you know, and that Diana's husband, he's so supportive. He's an incredible human being who supports everything that Diana and I decide to do, whether it's marketing, whether it's any crazy idea, Andrew is right there to jump in the bandwagon and support us. And that's what we need. You know, she has a great, um, you know, support from him. And whenever we want to start a project, he's the first one to say, let's do this. I think we're a great team. I think people see that we support each other. Um, we want to grow, we want to rise, and we want to make a, a difference on people's lives and on people's health. You know, we've been able to hear stories of people uh, taking less medicine from their their diabetes. You know, their cholesterol. Uh, women and men losing 20, 30 pounds. I mean, these are stories that motivate you and want to keep doing what you're doing you know we have influencers that they want to support us and we're like you know they just people want to do things just to help us and see us back in a store and that's gratifying now you know for sure you're doing something right when you see that you definitely convince yourself that you can't give up you don't have it's not an option you you got to keep going so you can reopen your business because there's people waiting for you to reopen again so that's all. That's what we have in mind right now. It's just focusing on what we can do. The key is to control what you can, right, and then let go the rest. And that's the that's not easy for most people to do. Uh, thank you so much, both of you, for being here. I'm learning a lot. We're going to take a little bit of a break so we can thank our sponsors and also give you both a break off camera so you can share on your Facebook and on Twitter and also on LinkedIn. We're live on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Please share this live video so your friends and family can join us. We'll come back to our awesome guests in just a minute. So thank you, everybody. And we have to thank our sponsors who are just absolutely awesome and make it possible for us to do this show. So let's thank our sponsors. First, we want to thank Nunbelievable, Divinely Delicious Cookies on a Mission. Uh, each handcrafted cookie provides a meal to those in need. One cookie equals one meal. 20% off with the code SREE, S-R-E-E. 20% off with S-R-E-E, nunbelievable.com. We also want to thank our friends, uh, Charles Cunnan Carroll and the publishers of A Step, The Inventor in You, A Step-by-Step -step Guide to Your First Invention by Charles Cunnan Carroll, developer of more than 80 patents at Inventor Charles, guide to invention.com, guide to invention.com. Please check out his book. You will learn a lot, I promise. We also want to thank Muckrack Academy, which helped me put together Fundamentals of Social Media, a free on-demand certification course. More than 4,000 people around the world have taken this course already, and so can you. MRAC.co slash social. MRAC.co slash social, a free course that you can put on your LinkedIn. It's about two hours of work, and look at all these great people who have already taken this course and they have shown us their certificates. People all around the world have done this already and we're super excited to have them do that. And promotional consideration also provided by... And please check out hotstar.com slash US. They're very, uh, they're very supportive of us and our show. So we're very grateful to Hotstar. And we want to thank our event partner, 
One Shared Worlds Rise or Fall Together Conference, which starts on Thursday, September 17th at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. for three hours, a world-class conference with amazing speakers, as you can see, Renee Fleming, the world acclaimed singer, David Nabarro, the WHO Director General's Special Envoy on COVID-19, Jayaram Ramesh, a great expert, an MP and great expert on the environment out of India, and Kekashan Basu, founder and president of the Green Hope Foundation and UN Human Rights Champion. So please check out all of these folks who support our show. And here's what we're doing right now. We're watching uh, as an episode called LA Under COVID. Fernando Zeladon and Catherine Garces are with us. And uh, Greg Monterosa, we hope will join us in a little while. So let's bring back our guests and say thank you to them for being with us. Thank you folks for being here. We're so grateful uh, to you. Let's look at some more of the comments that are coming in. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Apollo is watching from a train rolling through Indiana. So he's he's on a train from Las Vegas to New, to New Jersey, and he's been a guest on the show. We did a show, Las Vegas under COVID, and he was with us. Uh, first of all, uh, I want each of you to tell me a clean story about Vegas that you can share uh, on a family-friendly program. So Catherine, we're going to start with you. Uh, a Vegas experience, you mean? Yes. Um, you know, this is so funny. I got married in Vegas. <laughs> I was on a business trip. This is about 20 years ago. I went on a business trip and uh, it's my ex-husband. Uh, at that time, my boyfriend, he flew and he surprised me. He proposed and I was like, my parents are going to disown us. And he was like, so what? Like, I was like, this is crazy. So we went, we did it, we got married. Um, we were married for over 10 years. We have three beautiful kids. We are the best of friends and we do whatever we can for our children. But that was my crazy experience in Vegas. I actually got married. So uh, how is it different from some stories is you actually knew this person before you married him. That's good. Of okay. course. <laughs> Of course, of course. And the second uh, thing is, was it the chapel of love? Pardon? Was it the chapel of love? No, no, no. He chose some place. I don't remember. It's just, to me, I was just like, my dad will never talk to me again. <laughs> well, we're, we're glad you, you have a good, good memory of Vegas, at least in that way. Let's go to Fernando. Tell us a Vegas story. I, too, eloped in uh, Vegas. How oh, funny. My wife and I had uh, been broken up. We had been dating for four years, and we had been broken up for about six months. And I don't know, we got nostalgic. We called each other on the phone, or I called her, rather. She answered the phone. I, I went by. Next thing you know, we jump in the car. We're off to Vegas, and <laughs> we can't get married. My parents didn't know where I was. My mom never looked for me. This is when I was, I had my own apartment. So my mom never looked for me, but that one weekend and she couldn't find me. And she's like, Fernando, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where have you been? I got married. <laughs> so that was one of my stories. All right. We'll, we'll have another show where Fernando tells us more stories, but I, I, I love that both of you, what are the chances that both of you uh, have these uh, stories out of Las Vegas? Now our guest Greg is here as well. So let's bring, Greg onto the scene. Hi, Greg. Hi, guys. How are, how's everybody doing today? Great. Greg. To you, uh, uh, Greg. Greg's Twitter has a great description: startups and tacos. So he'll tell us yes. about both. And uh, thank you for being here, Greg. We've never met, but we're so grateful that you're here with us. We're just talking about LA under COVID, LA in 2020. We want to hear your story, but we want to start by you telling us a Las Vegas, Las Vegas story that you can share. <laughs> Las Vegas story. So I once hit a $120,000 jackpot in Las Vegas playing high stakes video poker. So uh, wow. it was a complete accident. So that is my one Las Vegas story that I could tell on this podcast. Okay, you, you win. <laughs> I wanna know, did you leave Las Vegas with some of that money? So what happened was at the time I was working for a manufacturer of dental implants and the founder CEO was the only guy I knew that owned a private plane. 
So he takes us all to Las Vegas for like a company event. And I see him sitting at a bar and I'm like, this is my window to go talk to the guy. So I go, I sit next to him and I bring up dialogue. I ask for a drink and the waitress says I have to be playing in order to get a drink. So I reach into my wallet, not realizing I'm in a high stakes area. And uh, lo and behold, I put my money in and then you never want to, you always want to max bet. And so, uh, yeah, it, it was a night to remember. And did you, did you get to keep some of the money? Oh, I sure did. But the state of California kept most of it. <laughs> I, this is amazing that I have three great Vegas stories in, 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 in three guests that never happened. Right. So this is, this is awesome. Uh, Greg, how are you doing? Where are you? And how's your family through COVID? So um, COVID's been a season for opportunity for my family and I. So we quickly identified that we can take the attitude of victim and waiting for things to happen, or we can be proactive and make moves. And so, yeah, my family and I decided to make moves. So my background is in technology. I serve founders, I connect founders to mentors, and I help people scale ideas. So when COVID hit, my attitude was, you know what, it's time for me to eat what I cook as a mentor. So I opened up a retail establishment in the middle of COVID. Go ahead, and that's been quite it. a journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, that, and that's been quite a journey. So, so my attitude is as a mentor and, and as somebody that, that has a tribe of people that, that look up to us, my attitude is we're always looking for opportunities and we refuse to die, right? Like let's live in an environment of thrive and not so much survival. So I identified where is the biggest opportunity right now? Where are people spending money? So here in Los Angeles, there's this neighborhood, Fairfax and Melrose, that's really hip. And these stores have massive lines going out of their stores for people trying to go in and shop. So I partnered up with somebody that has a passion for that industry. And we signed a lease October 1st. And by the 21st, we launched. And by September 1st, the space had made enough money to pay its own existence, which was beautiful. That's sort of uh, hard to imagine that so quickly you could you could do that. Uh, but uh, I want I everybody you guys, to see your, you? yeah. Uh, I, I I wanted everybody to see your Twitter uh, handle. It's Greg Metro, uh, so you, you can find him there. And uh, and Greg in the private chat, you can see on the right. I have put a link to our tweet, so you can share that tweet right now, so that your Absolutely. friends can watch watch us live as well. So uh, let me go back to Fernando, and then we'll come back to you, Greg, in just a minute. Oh. Fernando, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about your work. And it was very important for you that we talk about what's happening in the Latinx community in Los Angeles. And we're so proud to have three Latinx people on one show. Normally, there will be one or none uh, to have three people. So tell me, Fernando, what has it been for the co There's not one Latin community, but what has it been like to be Hispanic and kind of deal with the government and everything else that you have to do as a Latino in Los Angeles? Well, in certain aspects of the, the government of this, or the city of Los Angeles is a very uh, fruitful place to, to do business in or to have relationships in. Um, for other things, it's not, or it hasn't been in, but it at least sees the opportunity it does see itself as a place that shouldn't be uh, backwards. So, for instance, you can look at the, um, the tech industry in Silicon Beach. It's uh, hardly representative. We're, I think, uh, below 10% uh, of the population working in tech. Uh, forget about owning something in tech. I think that's around 5%. So, we don't represent, we, we're not represented in the numbers but uh what i like to look at is at least how los angeles can be more of the uh the uh the the, the point of of creating um we have many of the industry's top uh communications organizations especially in spanish we have telemundo univision located here they're also in, in miami and in new york and other big cities like chicago but Los Angeles should be more of a, a fulcrum and um, it should be feeding all of those possibilities. Uh, there are places in Latin America that are just 
a, a wash. They're, they're deserts for technology. Places like Honduras and and uh, Peru. Peru's getting better, but Honduras is is is, is a uh, is a desert. And if we look at some of the social ills that are coming to us uh, from places like Honduras, part of the uh, situation is that there's a lack of jobs, there's a lack of innovation. And I think that bridging that gap between somewhere like uh, Silicon Beach and America, we can make change. Thank you. I like that term Silicon Beach, which many non-LA people may not have heard. So it's good to make that point. So let's talk to our friend from uh, from uh, Silicon Beach uh, in uh, in Greg. Uh, Greg, so tell us what that business is exactly that you founded and how did you have the guts to do it in the middle of this? Uh, thank you. Greg, go ahead, you're muted. Go ahead. Greg, you're muted. Greg, you're, you're muted. Here we go. I got you. So what I've realized is that opportunity funds my passion. If I focus on where my where does the biggest opportunity lie, then it's I'm able to afford to do things I'm passionate about. Because things I'm passionate about don't necessarily make me money. So I'm passionate to help founders and connect dots for them, right? But I don't get paid for that. But that's a passion of mine. So I'm looking at an opportunity play. So with this store, we sell uh, vintage shirts. So like one of a kind T-shirts that from concerts back in the 80s and 70s, luxury streetwear. So there's this whole marketplace for certain brands like Supreme, Off-White that create a secondary market. So certain tennis shoes, I buy you buy them from Nike for $200. And that evening, that shoe is worth $1,200 because they're sold out of that shoe. So that's oh, the marketplace wow. that I've entered into. And, and it's been really exciting. People are really passionate about certain brands. And getting their hands on them. So I'm here to provide them that value. That's amazing. I have 17 year old twins who talk about brands I've never heard of. I barely heard of Off, off White, uh, Kitsch. Yes. Uh, Kith, right. Kith, right? K I T H. Yep. I'm not yep. hip enough to know all this. So uh, it's great that you're, you're catering uh, to those folks. Uh, let's bring Catherine into the conversation. Uh, Catherine, what is your message to folks who are in LA and thinking of starting a small business, but want to are uh, very worried because of the because of the COVID situation that this is not the right time to you reinvented yourself. Greg has uh, as has done a new business. What is your message to them, Catherine? Um, I think it's more importantly know your audience. You know, you need to understand what your audience is. What's the location of the place that you're going to open? What exactly? Look at look at the trends. Look what's going on. Look what that what you can whatever you're going to sell. Find the location where it is. <clears throat> there is a, a marketing book called Make Me a Little Bit Different. I think it's called Always Try to Be Different. I'm not saying always try to compete. I'm saying try to be different. What can you be different than the other business so that you can stand out? What can you provide to your community? What can you do as you know, as a, as a labor of, of public service as well? So that you can be different in that way your business can, you know, can be successful. I think it's about what you can provide it. People go for the experience. People like a good product, but it's location. It's where you can give someone a good product. But most importantly, also is what can you give back to your clients so they can have that great experience at a, at a business. And let's see if Greg agrees, if those are some of the things for us to think about, Greg. Absolutely. And know that everything is negotiable right now, right? So landlords are desperate to get people into their spaces. Uh, merchants are desperate to relieve themselves of inventory. So look outside of your look outside of your local realm, right? So I know I've turned on several small business owners to fulfilled by Amazon. So instead of their inventory sitting in their warehouse here in Los Angeles or on their shelves, they're able to fulfill orders that come in through Amazon now and count on that revenue stream. So adapt and stay flexible is what i tell the founder these days that that's that's terrific uh, and tell me startups and tacos tell me about that um so living in los angeles uh our tacos are second to none against the entire world i mean i've been to places like paris france i've been to mexico city i've i've been to colombia and our tacos don't compare um they're just really delicious here in los angeles so i'm on a quest to find the perfect taco in Los Angeles. And it's led me on a beautiful journey here. I've met some really cool people and have led me down some interesting alleys, literally. 
Uh, you, should, you should check out the La Taco Guide. It's an app, and they feature a lot of taco places. But I got to go try you. Fernando, we have to go visit him and try his tacos. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I invite all of you to come to the taco stand opposite my house on 96 and Broadway. It's called Super Tacos. They were voted the best tacos in New York City. Really? So, uh, you got to come out right opposite my house. We try to eat there yeah. on a regular basis. It's called Super Tacos. New York Times said the best tacos in New York. And Super so we challenge to you guys out in LA. But it's interesting to hear that the LA tacos are different from Mexico City and from Colombia and all of these places. Right. So fabulous. What is the ingredient? What makes an LA taco special, Greg? What is it? Uh, you know what? I, I think it's the meat that's used and, and, and the corn that goes into it. So we get small tortillas here. So you get double tortillas in a soft shell. It's a soft taco. Like if it's a hard shell, it's not a taco. <laughs> but you get them in a, you get three nacho, small tacos. It's a giant nacho chip, right? If it's exactly. If it's no. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All so good. we're spoiled. Here, here in Los Angeles, they also pass like it's easier for people to sell things on the street. So street vending is legal here in Los Angeles. So that's brought out a lot of entrepreneurs. And to me, that's my unsung hero. That entrepreneur to me like gives me the chills because it's necessity. And they don't see themselves as entrepreneurs, but as somebody that brings literally food to their family's table. Unsung heroes. And give me one, one of your favorite places that I can check out when I come to LA. Um, well, when you come to LA, there's a there's a place right down the street from LAX, and it's where all the truckers are at. And and I'll send you the I coordinates to it. <laughs> I know that place. LAX. Yeah. It is like when I when I yeah. touch down in Los Angeles, <laughs> that is before I'm saying hello to people. That is my first stop. On our provider. So right. when I come, we my kids always take me to In and Out, which In and Out Burger, which is right next to LAX. <laughs> So now Everybody we, goes to that one. But we gotta add we gotta add your your suggestion as well. Thank you so much. We only have a few minutes left. Uh, one of the things that it pains us in New York is that California started locking down before New York, especially Northern California. Yeah. And then what went wrong? You guys were doing so well. What in your estimate, what went wrong? What can we do right going forward? Fernando, then Catherine, then Greg. Well, every every county was different. So where Los yeah. Angeles County was very strict on making sure everyone stayed in one place, Orange County w was more loose. And so basically it, it went according to your politics, really. I mean, because in one county people believe in the, the virus being real and the other uh, county they believed it was, a, it was a hoax. And so that was what determined how uh, – how the virus spread. And then of course, we crossed past no matter what. So you could have been taking yeah. yourself, but your neighbors did it and you would cross paths with them. There you have it. Yeah, we had a lot of people not following directions. You know, uh, they just thought that it was just, you know, like Fernando said, a hoax. Unfortunately, people started dying. People started being hospitalized. Uh, I think once the pandemic um, eased out, uh, you know, we were able to, like, for instance, in Orange County, people, a lot of people don't wear masks. Uh, I guess it's more under control, but based on the location, depending on the hospitals, how full they are in different cities, people should know that it's the place where you have to take care. I, for instance, when I go, I like to, I try to wear my mask, you know, especially if I'm going out in public. If I'm inside the restaurant, obviously I take it off, or if it's for, for a picture or something, I take it off and I put it back on. But uh, I'm high risk because I have asthma. So I have to be extremely careful where I go and always wear my mask. And, you know, people are, are going already to the beach. People are going out. They're going on walks. So I think it's it's it was at the beginning was the fact that people were in denial and they felt that their freedom was taken away and they weren't adjusting to the new change. So it was hard. We had to tell clients, yes, you do have to go get your mask. Yes, you do need to stay away. Yes, we're going to give you your product out the door. And they sometimes didn't hear, oh, do I need to wear my mask to come in? I'm like, yes, you have to go back and get your mask. And we had problems with, you know, clients would stump out of the establishment because they had to go get their masks. But unfortunately, you know, we have to follow the rules. 
there, it was a law. So we would tell them, yes, I'm sorry. We had actually, at times we had uh, disposable masks that we can give our clients. And at that time, let me tell you, we were spraying and disinfecting everything we could because for those that didn't listen, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, and, and it was hard for a lot of people emotionally, it was very hard. You know, think about a lot of teenagers, a lot of children, they were exposed to the social living and all that. And all of a sudden, as adults, it's easier for us to understand. And it's still hard for some people not following directions. But for some children to tell them, you know, that even 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 the, the school system that is being over, you know, video, it's hard for children to adopt. So that was a challenge with teenagers. Teenagers are a big challenge to have them understand you know i would argue with my kids sometimes like make sure you have your mask make sure you have one in your in, in your in your car or whatever but because you know they grew up in a different society like we did but we be, as adults we try to follow more directions with their children teenagers they try to kind of test you know the water so a lot of that's what they say that the youth was the one bringing the older people in danger yeah Perfect. Thank you for thank you for that. I'm, as a father of seventeen year old twins, I understand that nothing worse than being locked down uh, for your seventeenth yeah. birthday, and that's what happened to my twins. So I always feel bad about that. But uh, let's hear from Greg. So I think people just ran out of money and and had to hit the streets to to generate income for their family. Like the twelve hundred dollars only went a long way. I'm involved with the local organization here in my community where we serve the Latino community that's super underserved, that's super reliant on restaurant jobs that have been cut back, car washing jobs that have been cut back. And so these people just had to get back out to work. And so uh, the sanctions eased up and more people just hit the streets. We had a really beautiful summer here in Los Angeles um, where people just couldn't avoid but, but to get out the house. So yeah, the ease of restrictions and people running out of money is what I think drove up the numbers here in Los Angeles. Thank you. Uh, we just have a couple of minutes left. Uh, let's look at some of the comments that are uh, that are coming in. A lot of people are tagging other folks. I do want to give Catherine's Instagram handle. It's Andrea's Healthy Kitchen plus Soy Catherine Garces, right? Uh, yes. S-O-Y yes. Catherine Garces is her uh, Instagram. Fernando, are you on Insta? I'm on Instagram, yes. What is your handle? Oh, gosh. Uh, OK, you look for it. Greg, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so my Greg handle is Greg Metro. It's Greg Metro, and that's where I'm the most active. So I tap in and I give insights, uh, thoughts of life. I interview awesome people in my stories. So it's just, if you want to stay engaged, connect with me on Instagram or Twitter. And Greg Metro, I like that. You're a city guy. Yes. I like it. Um, exactly. And you, if, otherwise, your 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 handle will be Startups and Tacos. So I like that too. Uh, right. And. <laughs> And Chris says, Chris says, great that um, that uh, Catherine notes that she likes to visit New York City's museums when she's in town. So I like I like to see that. Well, I like to hear that as well. So that's that's great. And Apollo says all the stories about uh, 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 Vegas are awesome, and uh, but they're quintessential Vegas stories. Though 125,000 jackpot. That's the first time we've had that on. Uh, uh, here and people are tagging their friends so they can catch up with this later. So I want to give each of you a chance, you know, international audience, people who uh, are looking for hope and also some inspiration. So you can talk personal, business, or about LA, and uh, we'll just go around the around the uh, table. And uh, we thank you so much for your time and energy tonight. So let's start with Catherine. Um, I think it's it's a moment to, like I said, reinvent ourselves. But I think if as a team in, in Andrea's Healthy Kitchen, we did it as a business owner, I think you can do it as well. We're no better than you guys. We just focus on our community, giving back. And I think that's what made us more impactful. I, I encourage you to do the same thing. As a parent, I, I want you to understand that it's a tough time for our children. And it's not only about being a parent, but also try to understand their feelings and emotions because you know, my kids play sports, so it's hard for them to adjust to this new lifestyle. So I think compassion and understanding is something that we need to be able to provide for our community, for our friends, for our family, for our clients. You know, it's not only about I, I and what I can do, me, me, it's what I can do for you as well. And that will help us a lot to grow spiritually as people and as a family, you know, and for our friends. 
That's awesome. Thank you so much. Everyone follow Catherine. She is on Instagram, Soy Catherine Scarces, and she is also uh, Andrea's Healthy Kitchen, and she's on Facebook. And we wish you the very best, Catherine. Thank you, Thank you we, so I much. Hope, I hope you'll keep in touch. And when yes. you come to New York, bring Fernando with you so that you can, uh, Greg, we heard that Fernando's never been to New York. And so I know. Oh, we got to change that. <laughs> Fernando, if you had told me that, I may not have invited you on the show. I got to oh. tell you. you know? <laughs> right, right. Thank God I didn't tell you. Oh, Fernando, we have to go on, like, an eating, on an eating sprint when we're there. We're like, eat everything. Like, I time. I organize myself. What am I going to eat? Chinatown, Little Italy, you know, Astoria for Greek food and, you know, all these places. I go to the village for the pizza and Brooklyn. So you got to just get it ready. <laughs> and then you got to bring Greg so we can do a taco tour also. Yeah. I'm going to go visit Greg because mm -hmm. I want to try his tacos. Fernando, we should go and see <laughs> yeah, him. Definitely. Definitely. Okay, let's go to Greg. So on a personal tip for me, what's really helped me throughout this COVID period would be to inventorize aspects of my life from who I'm spending time with to how I'm spending my time. So now that I feel like I have more time to myself, I need to inventorize that time. So am I doing rituals, daily rituals that make me a better person? Am I learning a new skill set? On a business tip, we need to learn new skills. We need to continuously level up and see where big opportunities lie. So I have this friend of mine, she was going through this thing where she was overwhelmed with the four of her kids and her having to teach her kids. So uh, she ended up hiring tutors and they launched this agency where people can go drop off their kids for a few hours while they do their schoolwork um, for parents that don't understand what their kids are learning and they need to be side by side. So she took an obstacle that she was facing and she turned it into a business venture. And then for my city, we just continue to thrive. The Latinx community is on fire out here. We matter more than ever. Our GDP is through the roof throughout the country historically. So I think this is our time. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I love hearing that. Everybody, please follow Greg. He's at Greg Metro on Twitter, on Insta, and everywhere. Find him. You, I, I love how upbeat he is. And that's so important in this day and age for us to have that. Thank you very much, Greg, for joining us uh, in, in a short notice. And we're very grateful to have you here. I'm going to come to LA when I can. And we're going to uh, go on a taco tour together. And you're going to come to New York. And look at what Jonathan says. There are people who are devoted to New York tacos as there are people devoted to the New York slice of pizza. So we, we have Ooh. to meet those folks. And Rahadjan says, thank you so much, Fernando, Catherine, and Greg. and. Jonathan um, says, delightful show, gracias. I'm trying to learn Spanish through Duolingo. Uh, do you have other suggestions for him trying to learn Spanish? Is there another tool or what should he do if you have friends who are learning Spanish? Watch Spanish TV, novelas will help you. <laughs> that would definitely help you. <laughs> A nice long trip. Nice long yeah. time. Okay. That's great. Uh, blessings to you and your respective families during Thank the Thank you so much for having us. It was a pleasure. Keeping, this is what Rahajan said. Rahajan's mother, uh, he has told us the story. Rahajan's mother is an, uh, was a, a 50 years. She worked as a nurse. She's Filipino American. And then she was in a nursing home and she passed away during COVID with, by, by COVID. Sorry, we are so sorry, Rahajan, but you are been an amazing, uh, part of this community that we have built. Thousands of people watch every show. And so we're so grateful to you, Rajan, for sharing your story and sharing everything you're doing. And uh, let's get final thoughts from our friend who brought us all together, Fernando. Yes. Uh, oh, gosh. What was the question once again? I'm sorry. Uh, any final tips, personal, city, country, whatever? Tips, 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 tips. Keep an open mind. Uh, it's really... Just this reinventing That's what I find myself doing constantly. I'm constantly reinventing myself and being open, just being really open to the world around you. Um, one more project that, oh, by the way, this, this whole COVID thing has been really difficult for, for instance, my daughter. She was a senior in high school. She graduated in this environment. Wow. She wasn't able to do any of the walking, no Disney. Like a big thing here in Southern California is Disney. 
for uh, grad night. She wasn't able to do that. She wasn't able to graduate the normal way. So it's all difficult. But then this will mark their generation. This will be like the greatest generation use the uh, Great Depression to mark their generation. They're going to find the wherewithal to get power through it, and this will make them so much stronger than uh, previous generations. This is going to be an incredible generation coming out of this uh, this era. Wow, that's a, a great, story to tell. Yeah, that's a great way to look. I've put everybody's links on their their uh, on their handles on their names. You can see Fernando. You have to explain and pronounce your Instagram handle. Okay, so it's aplicando nuestras energías. Okay, so applying our energies. I love oh, it. Oh, I like <laughs> that. I love it. Love it. You're you're three awesome people. If I can ever help you with anything out of New York, please call on me. Uh, and we'd love to keep in touch. And we're so grateful to all of you for being here. God bless and good luck with everything. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you so much. Bye, Greg. Weren't they awesome, everybody? They were just fantastic. I'm so grateful to them. And I'm so glad that we were able to get such a strong Latinx representation on our show out of LA. We wouldn't want to do it any other way. Thank you so much. We're always looking for guest ideas, speaker ideas. And one of the things that we do on this show is we asked the great Columbia Law School professor who was in LA when I talked to her this summer, um, Kimberly Crenshaw, what can we do to be allies of the African-American community. She said, say their names. And so uh, what we try to do is to say their names on every episode of this show. And we do, we mix it up a little bit. Rahajan has been working on a list of white supremacists who have, uh, who have uh, attacked and killed uh, um, folks of color in this country. Uh, so we, we mix it up, we, we read different things, but we will read a list of names in just a minute. But before we do that, let me tell you what's coming up the rest of this week. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to have some humor, though we laughed a lot today. You're going to meet Karen Bergreen, who is a stand-up comic here in New York. And she's been uh, also has written two graphic, uh, two comic novels, which have earned praise from the New York Times, Oprah Magazine, and her mother-in-law. So you can join us tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern. On Fridays, 9-11, and we'll talk to survivors of 9-11 who will share what they have learned so that we can learn how to bounce back here in New York out of COVID. So please join us for that. And then on Saturday morning, we have 9 a.m. Uh, S.V. Date, he's the White House correspondent for HuffPost. He's the author of eight books, including five novels. His latest nonfiction book, The Useful Idiot, How Donald Trump Killed the Republican Party with Racism and the Rest of Us with Coronavirus. You can see he pulls no punches. He's the gentleman who asked President Trump at a press conference, do you regret all the lying you have done over the last couple of years? So we'll talk all about that on Saturday morning, 9 a.m. for that show. Before we go, we want to say their names. And we are going to say their names by looking at this photograph of Time Magazine cover. On the left, you see a cover painting by Titus Kaffer. And you see the blue pandemic of the glove on a mother whose child has been snatched away. On the right, a haunting photo of Larsenia Floyd with her young son, George Floyd. She would die two years almost to the day that he would be killed. He died, was killed on camera, murdered on camera in, as you know, in Minneapolis. They're now buried next to each other in Houston. So let us say their names. And these are not all the names. And Rajan has put up a great list that we will use in a future episode. Trayvon Martin, Yvette Smith, Eric Garner, Michael Brown, Laquan McDonald, Tanisha Anderson, Akai Gurley, Tamir Rice, Jerame Reed, Natasha McKenna, Eric Harris, Walter Scott, Freddie Gray, William Chapman, Sandra Bland. I'll just pause there to say to all of you, that some of these names you know so well, but some of these names you have never heard of, and that's the tragedy. Each one is someone who has a story, who has a background, who has a family, who has a life. Darius Stewart, Samuel Dubose, Janet Wilson, Kaylin Rockmore, Alton Sterling, 
Philando Castile, Joseph Mann, Terence Crutcher, Chad Robertson, Jordan Edwards, Aaron Bailey, Stefan Clark, Danny Ray Thomas, Antoine Rose, Botham Jean, Atatiana Jefferson, Michael Dean, Ahmad Arbery, Brianna Taylor, and George Floyd. And those are just some of the names. Those are not all the names. Those are just some of the names. We have lists and lists and lists and so tragic and we have to say their names. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for your support of this show. We are so grateful to all of you and we know that we can't do this show without our awesome producers, Rose Horowitz at Rose Horowitz 31, Vandana Menon, Vandana underscore Menon. And we have great guests coming up this week. Don't forget our, uh, our partners for our big event coming up, Rise or Fall Together, the OneShare.World Interdependence Summit. Register now, OneShare.World slash live, OneShare.World, 9 a.m. to noon next Thursday, not tomorrow, next Thursday. We're also grateful to our friends at She's On Call, fabulous guests every week, two surgeons talking about medical health and so much more, COVID-19 and beyond, on Facebook, on Twitter, at She's On Call. And we are grateful to nonbelievable.com, divinely delicious cookies on a mission, 20% off with the code SRE, S-R-E-E. -E. Please check them out. And we want to thank our friends at Muckrack Academy, Fundamentals of Social Media for journalists, PR pros, and everyone. Free on-demand certification course. Anybody can take it. And more than 4,000 people have taken it. Here are some of their certificates and photos. We're so grateful. MRAC.co slash social. MRAC.co slash social. And by the way, Apollo says, thank you all for an awesome show. Uh, and Rahajan says, uh, everyone, please stay safe, strong, and healthy. Blessings to all. Um, we want to uh, really say thank you, everybody, for supporting us. And a big thank you to our friends, Charles Cunnan Carroll, the inventor in you. A step-by-step -step guide to your first invention by Charles Cunnan Carroll, developer of more than 80 patents at Inventor Charles. Guide to invention.com. Guide to invention.com. Please check it out. That's our show for tonight. Today, there was breaking news about the new book by Bob Woodward called Rage. In it, President uh, Trump sat down with him and recorded interviews for so long, 18 interviews, so he cannot deny the wording on those interviews. And I'm just going to show you a tweet that I posted today, uh, which went out uh, just before we went on the air. And this was my tweet. You can lie to 330 million Americans, but don't lie to Dr. Sanjay Gupta. On February 7th, Trump knew COVID was worse than the flu. He said that to Bob Woodward. On February 24th, he lied to Dr. Gupta at the White House. Sanjay says a majority of lives lost could have been saved if Trump had told the truth and taken action. He lied to Dr. Gupta. He lied to the world. And we are paying that price, as you all know. Please connect with me on Twitter. Please connect with me on Facebook and on Instagram. And mainly connect with me on YouTube, youtube.com slash Srinet. We're so grateful to everybody for being here. And please email me if you'd like to send me suggestions for speakers, send us suggestions for collaboration. We're always looking to expand what we do. We're live every single day, 186 days through the pandemic. And we learn so much doing this. And thank you all for being here. Finally, if you'd like to keep in touch uh, and you don't want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which I do want you to do, here is a simple way for you to uh, be in touch. Use this QR code to get a gentle WhatsApp alert when we are live. That doesn't mean you are added to a WhatsApp group. It's not a WhatsApp group. It's just a WhatsApp, a gentle alert when we're live. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you soon. We are so delighted that you could be with us and 